Good afternoon again, dear students. My name is uh, Riyad Kuba. I am an English teacher. I've been teaching English for about uh, 14 years. And uh, I am also a teacher, trainer, and a YouTube content uh, creator. Before getting started, I would like to uh, uh, tell you a little bit about uh, this uh, YouTube channel, uh, which I created uh, especially for uh, high school students. On this channel, you will find uh, amazing videos that can help you study and revise your uh, lessons on a daily and uh, weekly basis if you want. Uh, you can find uh, online lessons, writing strategies, and uh, language uh, exercises. So for example, for the online lessons, uh, you will find like uh, videos for all the lessons that you will be studying uh, during this year, and uh, they are all created in a very uh, a creative way. Uh, in addition to that, you will also find a series of videos for both guided and uh, free writing uh, tasks. So please uh, check out uh, these uh, videos. So for example, if you want to learn how to write a postcard, a letter, uh, an advert, a speech, whatever you will be given this year in the exam, you can find uh, videos that can help you write uh, in a good way. Uh, a good way. The good thing about these videos is that they are all uh, created, as I said earlier, in a very creative way. Uh, I wanted to help the students leave these lessons and really enjoy them. As you can see from these pictures, if you want, for example, to learn how to write a speech, uh, I have uh, performed this speech for you to make it more authentic and uh, appealing uh, to all of you. This series is very important. I consider this series uh, very important because it contains tips and tricks uh, to help students avoid the common mistakes when uh, they answer uh, the English exam questions. So please consider watching this series because it's very important. If you want to follow me, uh, you can follow me on uh, YouTube, Facebook, and uh, Instagram to get notified whenever I upload a new video. In today's lesson, our session or live broadcast, uh, we are going to uh, focus on three language exercises that uh, you are familiar with. Uh, the first one is uh, put in the right and tense uh, form. The second one, circle the right alternative and uh, fill in the blanks with the missing words. And I'm trying to give you some uh, hints, some uh, uh, advice, some uh, tips uh, on how to deal uh, with such uh, exercises so that you can maximize your chances to get a full mark. Meanwhile, during this uh, session, we will uh, be revising some uh, vocabulary related to this unit, which is entitled Creative Minds. Uh, we know that you uh, have learned uh, the scientific achievements, Nobel Prize, uh, the brain drain, and uh, other lessons. And we will uh, revise uh, some uh, grammatical points uh, as usual. So if I want to form the passive voice in the simple present tense, the rule is and uh, today I'm going to try to help you find the correct answers and help you maximize your chances to get the full mark and uh, give you some tips and tricks. So uh, now we will move on to the second type of question, which is uh, circle the right alternative. Let's move on to the last uh, type of question, which is fill in the blanks uh, with the missing words from the box uh, there are two extra words so uh, the tips uh, for this exercise are the following <clears throat> as you can see in uh, each exercise we have some tips and tricks we have some uh, strategies that we have to follow and uh, to use when we answer these questions so please uh, keep in mind these uh, rules. And you can check out uh, my other videos because I have a series of uh, language exercises that you can watch on uh, YouTube. So the first uh, tip here that you have to uh, follow is classify these words in the box according to their types. Then read the paragraph to get an idea about it. While reading it, try to guess the type of each word you need in each gap by finding some clues and hints again. So after classifying these words, I have to try to guess what I need in each blank. So that's very important. And then fill in the blanks, keeping in mind these tips. So let's put this these tips into practice. The first word, although. 
what is the type of this word? It's a conjunction. A conjunction, it's a, it's a, it's a word that we use to link between two sentences. So that's a, what a conjunction is, although. So I have to keep in mind that if I am going to use although, the structure is although plus subject plus verb. If I am going to use it, I will have to find subject and a verb. That's uh, the structure of this conjunction. Scientific, we said it earlier, it's an adjective. So if I am going to use it, adjective plus noun. So you see what I, what I am doing now? I am classifying these words and I am trying to guess the structure that I might find in the, the paragraph. So that's very, very essential. Created. Created can be a simple past verb or a past participle for. The same thing for discovered. It's a past uh, verb and or a past participle. While it's a conjunction. Usually when we use while, it comes in this form here. We have sentence one or sentence two. We can have it this way, or we can start the sentence with while, then we have comma, and then we have the rest of the sentence. Sentence one here, sentence two here. So these are the two structures. And what does it express? It expresses contrast, okay? It means uh, like two, either two different ideas or two actions happening at the same time. Okay. Then we have in spite of, which is also a conjunction. In spite of is... It's the synonym of uh, although, but the structure is different. If I am going to use in spite of, I must find a noun. So keep this in mind. This is very important to maximize your chances to get the full mark. It's not difficult if you follow these uh, tips. Then we have never. And then we have infecting which is a gerund. And then we have could, which is a modal. We know that with modals plus base, base form. It means verb without to. A modal can be like can, could, should, must, and so on. So these modals plus base form. So I have to keep in mind that if I am going to use could, I must find a verb that's a, that is in the, the base form. This is the first step. The second one. Now, this is the second tip. Read the paragraph to get an idea about it. Then while reading, try to guess. What do I need this? Do I need a verb? Do I need a fast participle? Do I need a model? Do I need what? So I have to guess. So let's do that. Together, the coronavirus pandemic shaped the year in research, from vaccines and treatments to campus shutdowns and virtual meetings. We know that last year was very hard. It was a tough year, and uh, even this year, because of the uh, pandemic. So one event dominated in 2020. So last year, a lot of people were talking about, or we were talking about, uh, the pandemic and uh, to uh, how to protect uh, ourselves. So one event dominated in 2020, a deadly and previously unknown virus caused chaos across the globe, killing more than 100, uh, more than 1.5 million people, comma, a blank, many more 
and causing. So that's very helpful. These are my indicators again. So you see, these exercises revolve around finding indicators to help you find the correct answers. Then we have economic, domestic. So what do, what can I need here? Maybe I will need a gerund. Then we have full stop here, a blank. There are other newsworthy research development in 2020, comma, the pandemic set the course of science to an extraordinary degree. So what do I need here? So maybe a conjunction. So a conjunction, maybe we will need while, or maybe we will need although, but we cannot need in spite of because in spite of plus noun. And here we have the subject and we have a verb. So I, I don't answer now. For the second tip, I just have to guess what I need and then do the exercise. The speed of the coronavirus spread has been matched only by the pace of a blank. And then here I have a noun. What do I need before a noun? We need, as we said earlier, an adjective. So what are the adjectives that we have here? Until now, we will only find uh, adjective, uh, scientific. So almost as soon as SARS-CoV-2 was Come on. Was, after was. Maybe we need a past participle. So maybe created or maybe discovered. So may, that's the next step. You have to read again the paragraph and try to understand the context to choose the correct one. Research groups worldwide started searching for its biology Others developed di uh, diagnostic tests or invested public health measures to control it. Scientists also raced to find treatments and uh, create vaccines that bring, so this is the base form, the pandemic under control. We have... So here, sorry, there is a, a mistake. So we have, and we have the past participle here. What do we need before the auxiliary has or have plus past participle? What do we need in between? We will only need the, the an adverb. That's the only thing that we that we need. Next. So this is the second tip. After classifying these words, we will guess what we need. And that's what we have done so far. Now we will do the exercise together. The coronavirus pandemic shaped the year in research from vaccines and treatments to campus and shutdowns and virtual meetings. One event dominated in 2020 a deadly and previously unknown virus caused chaos across the globe, killing more than 1.5 million people, infecting many more, and causing. So here we have to keep the sentences, as we said, or the structure paralleled, as we, as we said. So very good. Then we have scientific. The speed of the coronavirus spread has been matched only by the pace of uh, scientific insights. Almost as soon as SARS COVID was discovered, it was discovered, research groups uh, worldwide started searching for its biology, while others developed diagnostic tests uh, 
to control it. So here, once, as we said earlier, let me get back to the previous uh, slide. While we have two things or two uh, ideas happening at the same uh, at the same time. So he, what do I have here? As soon as SARS-CoV-2 was discovered, a research group worldwide started searching for its biology. Some groups were in charge of that, while others developed diagnostic tests and or investigated public health measures to to control it. Scientists also raced to find treatments and create vaccines that could. So, as you can see, plus base four. Bring the pandemic under control. We have never progressed so fast with other infectious agents as a variologist. The Rockefeller University in New York. So, as we can see here, we need an adverb between this auxiliary have and the past participle. So this is how we should answer such uh, uh, questions. Before uh, finishing, I would like to remind you of some of the mistakes that students usually make. As I said earlier, I have a four-part series dealing with the common mistakes that students usually make when they answer the reading comprehension questions, the listening, uh, the language exercises, and the, the guided and the free writing tasks. So, so it's a four-part series. Please consider watching these uh, uh, videos. So uh, the first uh, common mistake that students usually make is that they don't differentiate between what a tense is and what a form is. So the first thing that you have to do is ask yourself whether you need a tense or you need a form. The second one, spelling mistakes. This is very common and we find this mistake in many exams when we correct the baccalaureate exams. And so the student here answered the question correctly, but what is the mistake? It's not going to be, uh, the student here is not going to be marked. Why? Because he has made a, a spelling mistake. So make sure when you write the word in the blank or in the gap that it is written correctly. So please do not misspell the word from the box. We find lots of similar mistakes this, like this one. So please be careful that when you copy the word from the box, so here it's spelled with an E, so it should be spelled with an E. The second mistake, here we have full stop. So after a full stop, what do we need? We need to start the sentence with a capital letter. So this is a capital letter. So the word here is although, so I have to start with A with a capital letter. So that's very, important. This is the second mistake. The third one is that students gamble. What do, what do I mean by that? They write the same word or one word in many blanks. Why? To uh, make sure that they get uh, at least uh, half a mark. Let's take uh, an example. We have the word infecting here. So they write the word there. Then they write it here again, and they write it here again. So you see one word in many blanks. So of course, this one is correct. But the other ones are not correct. So even this one will be considered incorrect. Why? Because this is called gambling. Don't gamble. Don't write one word in many blanks. This will be incorrect. That's all for me, guys. Uh, thank you so much for uh, attending this uh, lesson. And uh, I hope uh, you have enjoyed it. If uh, you have, please don't forget to uh, share it with your friends and uh, tag those who might be interested uh, in uh, such uh, videos. And uh, I recommend that you watch the other videos at your own uh, 
uh, is to learn more about how to deal with the, these uh, exercises. So I have a, a four-part series in which I have uh, taught students how to answer language exercises. So please consider watching these videos. As usual, you can follow me on uh, YouTube, Facebook, and uh, Instagram to get notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you so much uh, for those who have attended this uh, lesson. So uh, that's it. See you another time in another life lesson. Have a good day. Bye-bye.